Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. Um, Greek sweet wines. I've got three of them. I don't know if you can see from this. There was a great sketch uh, from sometime in the, uh, the 60s where I think it was Ronnie Corbett, Ronnie Barker and John Cleese. And it's like, I look down on him and I look down on him and I look up to him. Well, it feels like that, that, that with these... Um, with these three bottles here, uh, will one look down on the other or will the other look up to the other and think I'm better than you? Let's get going. And the first one I've got is from the Samos Co-op. Actually, the first two I've got are from the Samos Co-op. Um, and uh, the, the Samos Co-op makes some terrific muscat in different styles, as we'll see from these two. Um, and the, the style here, I think this is probably, um, if you think of Muscat de Beaune de Venise, the idea here is that they make a, a wine from Muscat grapes, let, let it ferment a little bit, then fortify it, so you're left with what's called a Van du Natura, a naturally sweet wine. They haven't added sugar, it's just that all the sugar didn't ferment out. Now, barley sugar. Now, barley sugar means something if you're in the UK. If, it, if you're not in the UK, if you ever see these sort of little orange sweets that sometimes they, they, they used to sell them in chemists. I don't know what was the life-giving or health properties of, a, of, a, of a, something that was basically 100% sugar. But um, it's got this really lush barley sugar edge here. Bit of citrus, bit of orange peel in there too. Mmm, smells good. Mm. Well, I mean, that would shame quite a lot of Muscat de Beaume de Venise. Um, but what, what I like about it compared with some of those is it's got this gentleness of the fruit um, and the spirit um, doesn't feel like it. Sometimes Muscat de Beaume de Venise can burn, have a little, little bit of a burning character. Here, the spirit is really nicely handled. You've got this juiciness, you've got this barley sugar, they've got this citrus edge, um, and the whole is very harmonious, very user-friendly. Not very complex, I have to say, but very lovely. Next one. Um, now, I don't know whether this is basically the same wine that's been given some oak aging, but this has been in barrel for a considerable amount of time, hence the uh, deeper colour. Um, it's the 2003 vintage Anthemis. And um, same degree of alcohol, so hey, let's go to whirl. And it's much more, uh, if you think about uh, things like tawny port, it's got some of that, what I call the smell of mahogany. Nuts, raisins, a bit of treacle toffee in there. Yeah, quite a different wine from, um, from the, um, the, the, the basic Van Du. And yeah, I, li I like that. It's, got, it's still got a liveliness. I, mean, I don't know, I'm not really up on my Greek vintages, but if Greece was like the rest of Europe, 2003 was a baking hot year. Um, even so, in a wine like this, they've managed to get a bit of freshness in there. It's not all gloopy and boom, 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 boom. I like that, um, that treacle toffee, but I like that edge of citrus freshness there. Barley sugar's gone that was in the first one, but you're left with this, yeah, this, uh, the, the, the wood character is coming through, not so much in, in toasty oak character, but in this um, gentle, nutty, raisiny, mahogany edge. Mm. Yum. Last wine. Um, we're on a different island now, and um, with different grapes. The, if you saw the other Greek video, I, I did two wines from Hatsidakis on Santorini. And um, the main grape that they, he, he was using for, the, for his dry wines was a Certico. Now this is a Certico with a bit of Aidani in there, which is another of the white grapes. It's slightly confusing because there's red Aidani and there's white Aidani. This is um, the white Aidani, I think. Although you look at the colour of that and uh, you'd be forgiven for thinking, golly, that was a wine that uh, started off as a red wine. It's amazing how fortified wines over the course of time, you have like 30, 40 years on, you're never quite sure whether it started life as a, a red wine or a white wine. But here it's got this, um, yeah, this, um, this, this rich ruby. Where does the ruby, where does the red come from in a white wine? Um, it's got, yeah, it's got this, uh, yeah, ruby and brown colour. 
Um, and smell wise, it smells like um, it, it reminds me of tawny port, um, a port that's been in a barrel for quite a long time and developed this. Uh, it's got some of those nutty, raisiny characters here, but it's probably got a bit more freshness than uh, than the the muscat. I think it's been in the barrel for quite a bit longer. I think this is maybe been, the Anthemis has been in for about three years. I think this has been in for five years, maybe even more. Now, what's weird is I preferred the smell of this, but the flavour I'm left with, it's just almost like a bit too sweet, a bit too rich. And I miss the kick of alcohol that I get here. Uh, what's, what the effect the alcohol is having on the anthemis is, is to provide a little bit of structure, uh, freshness, or a weird, weird sounding freshness on the finish, but just, just a bit of bite. Here I'm left with something that is almost just a bit too gloopy. It'd be very nice poured over the vanilla ice cream, but by itself it's almost too much of a good thing. It smells good. Tastes just a bit too rich. But an interesting trio. Um, so it doesn't work out. I'm, I look down on him. This for me is the guy who the guy to follow. The Anthemis, I think, is a terrific wine. I like the Vandu too. And um, Halcidarkis, I think I pre much prefer your. Um, your, your simple dry assertico. More of that, less of this please. See you soon.